How many of you would lock yourselves in a small house with five strangers for eight months? <laughs> That's what I did last year as commander of Mission 5 for High Seas. High Seas is a simulated mission to Mars funded by NASA to study human psychology. Six of us lived in a small habitat on the side of a remote volcano doing the things that Martian astronauts would do like conducting science, making repairs, and eating shelf-stable foods. We didn't see other people for the entire mission, and our world was contained to 130 square meters. Now, to give you an idea, that is roughly how big my room was. Now, I could never have jumped like that, because in this space was a bed, a desk, and all of my belongings. But more importantly, with the sloping dome-shaped roof, probably would have hit my head. To go outside, we wore mock spacesuits. And while this was a nice break from the confinement of the habitat, there was significant overhead involved. We had to submit a request to mission support the day beforehand. And suiting up could easily take 30 minutes or more. So not exactly a... Uh, spontaneous stroll on the Martian surface. And beyond the physical limitations, our connection to the outside world was funneled through a 40-minute communication delay. We didn't even have access to Google. <laughs> so here we are, six strangers sharing a single tube of toothpaste. Surely we had some epic arguments, right? Well, the answer, surprisingly, is no. And what I'm going to share with you is what I learned about conflict during the mission. And it doesn't take special astronaut-like personalities, but an often forgotten realization. Before the mission, I was a conflict avoider. Now, we all know someone like this doing pretty much anything to avoid even the most basic conflicts. But that isn't an effective strategy, because it just transports the stress somewhere else. Either you hold it in, impeding your own ability to get things done, or you offload it to someone else by venting to them about your stress and your conflict. And when your entire social network consists of only five other people, <laughs> you can watch that stress and conflict spread from one person to the next to the next, and eventually back to you, creating a downward spiral. And this happens in the outside world. It's just harder to see. The good news is that positive moods spread just as easily, and it takes one person to stop and reverse the cycle. We all know the feeling of a brewing conflict, the fear of rejection, and the negative emotions associated with winning and losing our position. What I learned from my crew is that that's not an accurate model of interpersonal conflict. It isn't you versus the other party. Conflict is just another problem needing a solution. It's you and the other party working together to solve that problem. And once you realize that, the negative emotions dissolve and real solutions can be found. We applied this method to simple things, like how to do chores, all the way through tougher topics, like how we interact with each other and addressing failures. So the next time you find yourself avoiding a conflict, have the confidence to make an ally out of the adversary, because the reality is that they're already on your team. They're a colleague, a friend, a family member. That is how we survived Mars, because while we can't eliminate conflict, we can solve it peacefully. Thank you.